Have you ever wanted to control a higher powered device from a low powered one without frying it? Well, one of the easiest ways is to use a relay. Relays are a type of switch that can be turned on and off electronically. Just like this little demo I have here, the relay is turning on and off a 12 volt fan from a 3.3 volt microcontroller. Internally, they are made up of two physically and electrically separated circuits. The input circuit, which does the switching, and the control circuit, which is what gets turned on and off. But if the two circuits are isolated from each other, how does one switch on or off the other? Well, it's not done with magic, but rather using either magnetism in electromechanical relays or light in solid state relays. There are other types of relays such as reed, coaxial and others, but electromechanical and solid state are by far the most common types that a maker will likely want to use. Relays can also do more than just connect or disconnect a single path of electricity. They come with different combinations of poles and throws, which enable you to do interesting things when the input circuit is or is not activated. The number of poles a relay has defines how many switches there are in its control circuit. A single pole relay will let you switch only one device on off, but a double pole will let you switch two devices on off simultaneously. Note that poles cannot be controlled independently. They are both controlled by the same input signal. The number of throws a relay has, or more specifically a pole has, defines how many output contacts each pole in the relay can switch between. A single throw has one output contact per pole. A single throw can only switch its single contact from on to off and back again. And a double throw has two output contacts per pole and will alternate between its two contacts when the relay is on or off. For example, when contact A is turned off, contact B gets turned back on and vice versa. Finally, the control terminals have a few names as well. There's normally open, normally closed and common. We'll get to those later. So we have an understanding of what a relay is. Why would we want to use one? First of all, the fact that the input and control circuits are physically and electrically separated gives the relay its superpower. Being able to turn on and off high powered devices from a much lower powered device without frying the lower powered device. In practice, this means we can use something small like a Raspberry Pi Pico to control things that need a lot of juice to run, such as a fan or a motor or even a solenoid or a water valve. On a side note, I'm assuming that you are not a qualified electrician. While many relays can control 240 volts or mains power, it is not safe for you to do it. Do not attempt to manipulate mains power with a relay. Leave it to the qualified professionals. While relays have a very useful place in electronics, it can be good to know when to consider using a different type of switching device, such as a transistor or a MOSFET. If you need high speed switching, relays are relatively slow to turn on and off. If space on your circuit board is limited, most relays take up a lot more space than alternate components. If silence is an absolute must, Electromechanical relays can be a bit noisy when switching, although solid state relays are much quieter. Or if you just need to switch something on and off and that thing is the same voltage as your microcontroller, in most cases a transistor will do just fine. Now that we've decided a relay is the right device for our project, it's time to choose the right one. There are a few factors to consider when choosing a relay. First, we need to consider what input voltage the relay requires to be activated and if your circuit can provide the required voltage to it. Next, we need to consider the maximum voltage and current of the control circuit in the relay. This is sometimes referred to as the contact rating or how much the relay can drive. You need to select a relay that's maximum is higher than your load. Finally, if you're just starting out with relays, I recommend getting one that comes as a module, such as the one I'm using in this guide. A module will make it easier to connect the relay to your microcontroller, and come with the necessary circuitry required to switch the relay on from your microcontroller. Let's have a look at how to actually use a relay with a Raspberry Pi Pico. To follow along, all you'll need is a Raspberry Pi Pico, a relay, and a way to connect them together. I'm going to use a breadboard, some hookup wire, and this single channel relay module. 
It's linked in the guide if you want to get one yourself. You'll also need an LED and resistor, and if you have one handy, a 12 volt device and a power source. I'm going to use this 12 volt fan and a 12 volt plug pack. Again, check out the guide for links to everything I've used. If you're using a standalone or non-module relay, go and check out the guide where I've shown what other components you'll need and how to wire it up instead. Connecting up a relay involves wiring the input circuit to the Pico and then wiring the output circuit to the device to be controlled. To begin with, we're going to control an LED. If you're using the same relay module as me, you'll notice it has Chinese markings. Check out the guide for a reference picture if you need it. For the input circuit, connect the three pins of the relay module to the corresponding pins on the Pico. Relay VCC goes to the Pico, 3.3 volts. Ground goes to one of the ground pins, and relay in goes to Pico GPIO 16. Now you can use any GPIO pin, I've just chosen 16 for easy breadboard placement. For the control circuit, connect the LED to the relay by adding the LED to the breadboard, connect its negative leg to one of the ground pins on the Pico, add a resistor to the positive leg of the LED, and connect the other side of the resistor to the common terminal on the relay. Finally, connect the normally open terminal to the VBUS pin of the Pico. Note the VBUS pin on the Pico is connected directly to the Pico's USB 5 volt power. Be careful not to short any wires or you may damage the computer when you plug the USB cable into the Pico. We're all wired up and we're ready to use the relay to control the LED. Plug your Pico into the computer, head over to the guide and find the section example 1. Copy paste the example code. Head on over to Sony. Make sure it detects your Pico. Let's create a new file. Paste in the code and save it to the Pico. Now let's run this code and see it in action. Hit run. And as you can see, the LED is turning on and off via the relay. So how does this work? Well, first we import pin from machine because we're going to use one of the GPIO pins as an output. We set that pin up, which is pin 16 I've used, set as an output. We're going to assign it to this variable called relay. This is quite simple. In an infinite loop, we first turn the relay on, then we sleep for one second, and we turn the relay back off and sleep for another second. That's pretty much it. So we've controlled an LED, but we didn't really need a relay to do that with a microcontroller. Let's try something we do need a relay for switching a higher voltage circuit from the lower powered Pico. Remove the LED and resistor from the previous example, and let's wire up the 12 volt fan and power supply. We're going to connect up the fan so it's switching on the negative side of the circuit. So let's connect the 12 volt negative to the common terminal of the relay, and connect the normally open terminal to the negative wire of the 12 volt fan. We've now completed the control circuit. Note that I'm using this little barrel jack here, which is breaking out the positive and negative to a connector that I will use for my plug pack. Note this is purely a hardware change. We're going to reuse the code from example one. So let's connect the 12 volt power, head over to Thony and press play. If you look at that, it's working just like the LED was, but this time we have a completely isolated circuit that's running 12 volts and we're controlling it from a 3.3 volt circuit. Finally, let's take a closer look at the difference between normally open and normally closed. The circuit from the previous example has the 12 volt fan connected to the normally open terminal of the relay, which means by default, the fan is turned off. Leave it connected that way for now, so we can see normally open in practice and the benefits we might gain from it. Open the guide up again and go to example three. This is a super simple script. All it does is turn on the relay so that it stays on. That's it. Copy paste the script, and you can just overwrite the previous script if you'd like in Bunny, and hit save. Now let's observe the behavior of normally open. We'll run the script, and notice that the fan turns on and stays on. Now, don't touch the 12 volt power, leave it connected, but yank the power on the Raspberry Pi Pico. When you look at that, the fan has just turned itself off. The loss of power to the microcontroller has deactivated the relay and reverted the control circuit to the normally open position, causing the fan to turn off. This is a great feature to have in a system that needs to be turned off when there is a fault, such as a valve in a high pressure water system. 
If there were a fault, we would likely want to turn the water off automatically. For example, to prevent flooding while we found and fixed the fault. Now let's see the normally closed position. Leave the Pico disconnected. Disconnect the 12 volt power source and move the wire connected to the normally open terminal of the relay to the normally closed terminal. Now reconnect the 12 volt power source and you'll see the fan immediately turn on, even with the Pico completely powered off and not running. Normally closed is on by default. Reconnect the USB cable to the Pico and run the script from example three again. My script was named main.py, so it has run automatically. You should see the fan turn off as the relay activates and moves the control circuit across to the normally open terminal, which now has nothing connected. Pull the USB cable out from the Pico again and the fan turns back on. At first, this might seem a little pointless. What is the use of a switch that does the opposite of what you want? Well, imagine for a second that instead of a fan, we connected an emergency siren and we added that to the hypothetical high pressure water system I mentioned before. Now, when there is a fault in the system, not only does the high pressure valve turn off automatically, but the emergency siren also turns on automatically. Two useful tasks performed automatically at the same time, thanks to the handy relay. Relays are useful devices that can do a lot more than you might first think. If your next project needs to control something that runs on a higher power, or you like the idea of having hardware level fail safes, then look no further than the relay. If you're doing something cool with relays and want to tell us about it, or if you have any questions or need some help, let us know about it over on the forums. Until next time, happy making.